Ah, here we are, the drawing desk. So before I begin, I'd like to say I've been really been enjoying making these art videos, trying to see if I can have some level of success by posting non-clickbaity and quality content. It's been okay, but unfortunately today I have something different planned. I'm just going to unpackage all of these packages from China, basically. Now, most of these packages, or probably all of them, I don't know what's in them. So that's exciting. They were sent to me by a mysterious benefactor. Very kind and generous person. So, the only thing I do know about them is that they are all pens from China. Let's start with this one here. Hmm? You know, this pen here actually feels a lot like a pen that I already have. Could it be a Jin Hao 777? The base of the pen lacks that tiny little hollow that the 777 has. Maybe it's one of those uh, refillable Chinese brush pens. Oh, what is it? Oh, like the color of that. Oh, what a nice brilliant blue. Is it a fountain pen or a brush pen? It's a brush pen. So there we are. Nice Chinese brush pen. Does it come, and it also comes with a refillable ink cartridge. Now, if you haven't worked out what this video is exactly going to be about, I'm actually not gonna do a lot of drawing in this video, or maybe none at all. I'm just unpackaging all of these packages. So anyway, if you wanna find out what Chinese pens I'm going to be reviewing in the next few videos I'm going to make. Uh, this is the video for you. This is like a sneak peek of about, okay, so what's in this one? Right, let's, let's have a look. Okay, it's a pink. Okay, this is, now I, don't, I haven't had any experience with these. This is interesting. It's a pink STA Aquarelle brush. You've got a, what's on this side? So you've got a fine tip on this side and a, like a rather hard tipped marker brush on the other side. This is quite a hard tip, hard marker tip. Yes, yeah, so I've had no experience with this kind of pen, so I don't know. Is it like a watercolor brush? With a name like Aquarelle, I presume it's some kind of watercolor brush. Okay, that will be interesting. Okay, what's in the next package? Open sesame. Oh. Oh. Oh, these are pens that I bought. I'm sure I bought these ones. Ah, oh, they are. They came. Now, this here are two pens I will definitely be reviewing later. These pens are going to get their own review. Yes. So far, I'm quite impressed. Wow. So what they are, they are completely refillable ballpoint pens they come with a refillable little pist refill piston ink cartridge possibly designed for some kind of fountain pen ink i presume but look at that it's a it's a properly refillable ballpoint pen usually or maybe it's technically a rollerball pen because they probably expect you to put a water-based ink in it that's usually the main difference between a rollerball and a ballpoint all based ink or water-based ink so, um, actually no, oil-based ink in it and a rollerball has water-based ink in it. That's usually the case. Okay, right. So I bought these off AliExpress for not much at all. They're completely clear and completely refillable with no waste except for the incubi. So that is pretty cool. Now, what is in this one? Oh, it's a big package and in it contains contains oh two more packages super economy package right so what's what is it oh it's a kneadable eraser so is this a this is a chinese made kneadable eraser now having a chinese made kneadable eraser is pretty interesting because i've got a lot of uh i've got some brand new faber castell kneadable erasers as well so that would make an interesting video to compare a cheaper Chinese kneadable eraser to a uh, more traditional trusted manufacturer, that would be interesting. Okay, thank you. There's, there's another video I can make. 
Wow, I'm just... So, uh, what's in here? What is that? Okay, that's weird. What kind of pen comes with a USB cable? <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> what kind of pen comes with a USB cable? What is... It looks like a normal... <laughs> no, it's just the pen. What kind of pen is this? Has that got a tiny camera on it? Is this a... Is this a... This is a pen with a tiny camera on it. Oh dear, I pressed in the button now and it went. Oh, there we go. Okay. Where does the USB cable go into? Can I open it? Okay, it unscrews here. Ugh. Aha! That is where the USB cable goes into. Okay. Maybe it's a, a voice. Where did that piece of paper go? Is that... So it reads... Oh, here you can read it. It says, click the reset hole on the spy pen with a needle that and charge for 20 to 25 hours. Blah, 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 blah. Right here, I think that's the tiniest camera lens you could possibly imagine. Probably has a quality of less than a 90s handy cam, but... Amazing how far technology has come. I'm going to put that on charge, okay. Well, I was going to put it on charge. But in five seconds, I've already lost the USB cable. It's one of those one of those mini USB cables that no one uses anymore. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that was, uh, that was rather exciting. Now, here's another package. And in this package, we have, once again, more packages. Well, what is it? What, what is this? Oh, well, that's a hefty pen. <laughs> what a terrifying object. Tell you what, this pen is, it's like a fully metal pen, which is, I don't, I don't quite understand it, but it has this great big scary metal spike of death on the end of it. Looks like the kind of thing that would get confiscated at an airport. The knurling on it's not too bad, though. It's got some decent knurling. Unfortunately, the knurling is on the wrong end of the pen. It should be down here. Where the... Yeah, okay, I think I understand the purpose of this, of this pen now. I think this is like a glass breaker or something. It must be what it is. It's really sharp. Ouchie. The ouchie pen. What a beefy pocket clip. So what's inside here? Oh, we have a, a standard ballpoint pen refill cartridge. Designed to be used over and over again, but now I can't put it back back together. And it was full of grease. That was pretty gross. Oh, there we go. I have to find the sweet spot or something. It's a cool pen. I wonder what I could use this for. Maybe I should just keep it in my car in case I ever need to escape it. You know, after I have a car accident. I can just smash the glass with it. This pen could save my life. Or can I remove the uh, pocket clip off the end, can I? Yes, yes I can. Okay, well that goes in the pile. The pile of things to review and to marvel at, yes. Okay, next package. What's in here? Oh. Now these things, these things are always very handy to have. Oh, eh, eh, eh. The package just has to give birth to them first. Okay, here we, yes, right, okay, yep, yeah, no. We have little refillable water brush pens. That's a nice brush. Oh, very fine tip on that one. They twist always. They always open up these things in the reverse direction that you're expecting. I have never figured that out. Okay, the last package. And this package is a big one. It's in here. I wonder. Nothing. Try opening it up again. I didn't cut deep enough. Okay, try here. Oh. Oh, it's another package that has multiple packages in it. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a Chinese lead holder. One of those really cheap and affordable ones. Now, to be honest, 
I have bought one of these before, yes. And I used it for a bit and all round. That's actually, they're actually pretty good. Oh, does this come with 2B lead? That would be good. Oh, actually, no, I am wrong. This isn't your ordinary lead holder. This has got a repeller in it. Look at that. It works like a proper mechanical pencil. The grip on it, once again, is kind of average. In fact, the plastic up here provides more grip than the actual knurled metal part. When I was saying I had bought a similar type of lead holder before, I was actually referring to this thing here, which I had butchered and Frankenstein made into this monstrosity. So I made a great big aluminium grip for it because I wasn't content with this grip. And this is a very grippy grip. It's just a piece of aluminium cut into a rough hexagonal shape and then hacked to death with a hacksaw. So, but this is just a lead holder. It doesn't have any fancy lead repelling mechanism. Okay, I think this one is the last package. And it's a big, kind of interesting square shape. Why is it square? It's meant to be pens, isn't it? Oh, they're coloured pencils. Okay, so what do I, it says to pull this tab here to open up the coloured pencils, so, oh yes. Well, that worked. Now, these coloured pencils are of the, the Mu Hu brand, M-U-H-U-I. Never heard of them before. No idea if they're any good. But it would be interesting to compare them to uh, or maybe the Faber-Castell classic colour. Now, I didn't think I was going to do any reviews or drawing at the moment, but let's do a quick test with these pencils. I'm really curious. Yep, so this is the Faber-Castell classic colour one, and that's the 307, whatever that is. It's a very light yellow colour. Now, let's try this yellow. How does this one feel? That's, um, yeah, not very visible at all. Okay, so let's try another color. Hang on, let's, let's, I haven't given up on them yet. Let's try the red one. Okay, red. Mm-hmm, right. Okay, now let's try the red Faber-Castell. Wow, what a difference. Even the difference when it comes to feel is absolutely shocking. So this one feels very, feels very dry and powdery. And it really struggles to put enough pigment onto the paper. This one feels more smoother and waxy. And it really lays down the colours a lot more. So because this one's more dry and more powdery, I wonder if they blend better. Hey, that would be interesting. They blend better. There's a purple for the uh, Faber Castell. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's much of a muchness. I don't know. They're not very vibrant, these pencils. You know, I'm just going to say, it's very hard to recommend buying cheap Chinese pencils like these when the Faber Castell pencils actually exist. And they are also very affordable and put down colours very well. Well, here you go. Here are my, my loot of new pens and pencils. Look how marvellous this is. Oh, and there's that camera pen. That's going to be fun. I like the camera pen. This, blah, blah, blah. so the upcoming reviews I reckon I'm going to do, I'll definitely be comparing this Chinese kneadable eraser to a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. These brush pens, um, they are very handy to have. I do like them a lot, but I won't be reviewing them because it's very hard to review no name stuff, you know. If it doesn't have a brand name on it, I don't know how anyone can actually search for it. It's just a generic Chinese uh, brush pen. But I've used these before, they're very good, so. If this brush pen really amazes me, I might buy more of them. I'll try it out now. Oh, wow. That is a, uh, that's pretty vibrant. Okay, let's try out the brush end. That's a pretty hard brush. This isn't watercolour paper, so if I go over it more than once or twice, it does eat into the paper a bit. Let's try out one of these, uh, put some water in one of these water brushes. So that's basically dry. Well, that takes a long time to dry, that ink. I've got pink on my fingers. 
Now, can I re-wet the ink on the paper from this STA brush? I can. That would be capable of some pretty good blending effects. Look how soluble that is. Clearly some kind of dye-based ink. You could make some really good watercolour effects with that. That would be great. The STA Aquarill brush. Yeah, I've got to look into those. That looks interesting. Is that a tube lead? I do not know. Maybe it's more of a HP. It feels quite soft, actually. Oh, no, I'm starting to review things. I wasn't planning to review things in this video, but it's happening. It's happening. Just like to add that this also comes with a lead sharpener. How well does this lead sharpener work? It works. Look at all that powder. I know this wasn't particularly good content, but it was exciting for me. The death pen also works quite well. I mean, the life saving pen. You're good feline. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so anyway, I didn't even get to finish editing the video for the uh, pe Chinese pen packages, and another one showed up. Here it is. Oh, wrong side. Hang on. And then, yeah, so, uh, right. You're sitting there, are you? So you can be the center of attention. So let's find out what's in this one. This one is from Wish, apparently. It said on the package. I usually don't know where they're from, but this one had it on the package, so. I think Wish is a terrible name for a company. You shouldn't need to wish for it, like you hope it's gonna come or not. Okay, what's, what is it? What is it? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. <what? laughs> this is not. This is not a pen. That's not a pen at all. That's a big laser. What do you think of that, cat? You like big lasers? Certainly like sitting in front of my camera, don't you? Should prove to be interesting. Does it take like triple A's or something? Nothing. Are the batteries the wrong way around? Try that. Still nothing. This thing no work. Wait a minute. No, oh, that's why it doesn't work. Yeah, so I figured out why it doesn't work. There's no conductive path down the very base of it. It's like maybe there was meant to be a copper part there that runs up alongside to the conductive metal walls, but it just sits there in that little plastic end cap, so it does nothing. Fortunately, such a thing can easily be fixed with a piece of aluminium foil. I mean, aluminium foil. I'm sorry for my overseas viewers there to confuse you with my Australian gibberish. This is proving to be harder than I expected. Ah, and now a cat is attacking me. The laser pointer isn't ready yet, cat. What a disaster this has become. See you later. Goodbye.